Yeah, uh, I'm Kent Ashfield. I'm a uh, United States East Coast software developer and taking a look at Toy Story 2 and how to mod some of the textures in this game. So I'm just gonna sort of walk you through how to do a texture mod the manual way. Um, so first you gotta have an installation of the Toy Story 2 action game, but it's like you're to the rescue. Inside of your data folder, you're gonna navigate to any NGN file that you wanna modify. Uh, we have a mapping of all of the NGNs available to figure out where the textures are located. You're gonna open up XRipper 1.5 and navigate to the NGN file that you wanna pull the textures from. So we're gonna select uh, level.ngn in this case, which contains Buzz Lightyear. And then I'm gonna to browse to some location where I wanna rip them to and select all the formats and it'll extract the bitmaps from the collection. Then I just have to navigate to the folder where XRipper placed the files and you can see there's a bunch of different textures. And file 11 is Buzz Lightyear's texture. So I'm going to, yeah, there it is. You see the, there's the reflection of the face as well as all of the, there's some stuff from the power pack and some stuff from uh, the Rex hint tokens. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff that's not necessarily buzz related, but um, for this tutorial, I'm just gonna open it up in paint and make some modifications. You could also Photoshop it or, or do whatever. And we'll talk about what you sort of have to watch out for if you use a different application, but I'm just gonna do some sort of silly basic doodles and I'll maybe draw a box or something like that. Um, just light purple box and then maybe some squiggles, just just something to make it obvious that the texture mod worked. Uh, I'm, so you can see I'm going over not just Buzz's area, but also some of the other models. So this, this will affect other things in the game just besides the texture. Uh, but I'm gonna go save as, I'm gonna save as a bitmap picture. Uh, it's gonna be a 24 bit bitmap. If you do this in Photoshop, there is the option to save as a bitmap, but you're going to want to verify that the file size is the same. And if you do Photoshop, it probably won't be the same. So when you save as your new file, it might have just a couple of um, bytes of difference between, it might be something like, you know, uh, 9994 at the end instead of 9992. Uh, if that happens, just open it up in Paint and resave it. Um, and that'll, that'll get rid of the extra Photoshop metadata. So. Now you'll see I've got my original texture and my new texture. And if I check the file size, it's 96, not, uh, 196662 bytes. And the original was, let's see, 196662. So they're exactly the same, which is required for the mod to work. I'm going to delete all the other stuff that I don't need, the other textures I don't plan to modify. Then I'm going to go back into the Toy Story um, directory. And I'm going to grab the NGN file that I got these from. I'm going to copy it over into the place where I ripped the files. And then I'm going to open up HXD, which is a way to view the binary of a file. All files are stored as a combination of ones and zeros on your hard drive um, or your solid state drive or whatever storage medium you're using. Uh, HXD just interprets those ones and zeros as hexadecimal, and then it optionally offers the ability to view them as strings. This is a tool that's commonly used for people who are looking for Easter eggs and the files of different game binaries, because you can see all the strings that are going to be used and things like that. Sometimes developers will leave Easter eggs inside of those, but for our purposes, we're actually going to use this as a tool. We're going to open all three files, the original bitmap, the modified bitmap, and the level.ngn file. We're going to copy just the first couple of lines. It uh, doesn't matter exactly how many, but just, just select the first few lines of hexadecimal code, um, just enough to really distinguish it, maybe 10 lines or so. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to go to search and I'm gonna look under hexadecimal values in all directions, and I'm gonna search all options. There should only be one option that comes up. If you see multiple options, that means there was some ambiguity in your hex, and you need to select more to make it unique. Um, so I'm gonna place my cursor before the 42, which is the start of the matched area. I'm gonna select all of my new texture and copy. I'm gonna tab back over and go edit, paste right. What paste right is gonna do is it's gonna override the bits of hexadecimal data inside of the file, and it's gonna overwrite them with the new data. So it's just gonna literally replace the bits, and if they're the same size, it's gonna be the same number of bits, and they're just gonna replace the colors and replace the data, change some zeros to ones in some places and some ones to zeros in a different place. So I'm just gonna back up the uh, NGN file that I currently have, just put a couple of letters after it, maybe ORIG or something like that, just to keep it around if I'm I don't want to play with a uh, scribbled texture for the rest of the game. And then I'm going to copy my uh, modified level.ngn file from my workspace. And you'll see that it automatically creates a backup as well, a modified version. And I'll paste it into the directory with administrator privileges. 
And that's all you have to do. When you go back to uh, the Toy Story executable, I, you see I just got uh, DG Voodoo running there because I'm using a modern computer. This just allows me to use the uh, DirectX in the game. And I'll show you what that texture does. And there we go. You can see the scribbled lines sort of wrapped around the model um, and the purple square sort of next to the jump pack. So yeah, you can use this method to, uh, you can see, oh, there's the, there's the cube with the modified texture as well, just sort of illustrating that you can affect things just beyond buzz, um, all sorts of different options. I think the battery pack is also going to be affected, um, possibly some other textures, just depending on what we scribbled over. And I've mapped out every NGN file and every texture that it contains, so you don't have to necessarily guess which is where. You go through at any point and sort of look for the texture that you want to modify, you'll figure out what file it is based on the the mapping that I've provided, and then you can modify to your heart's content. And there are some much more interesting textures already developed in the scribble stuff, but uh, maybe in the future I'll develop an application that'll make this a little more automated and a little easier to work with. But for now, that's how to modify textures in Toy Story 2.